Hey, welcome back to Golf Ball Addict. Another golf ball review for you here today. Another direct-to-consumer model, which I love testing those. And uh, today we have the Quantix F18 Tour. Let's dive in. Okay, so first of all, so Quantix was actually the first golf ball I believe I ever reviewed. It was actually the F35 uh, control model, which is the, the, the more intermediate one. This is more the tour model, um, but that was a couple of years ago. That was actually two and a half years ago uh, that I tested that model, and it tested pretty good, but that was also before I had all the numbers. I didn't have a launch monitor. I, didn't, I just went out to the course and hit it around and said, okay, yeah, cool. Um, so I'm interested to see now that they've released a new model, an updated model for 2022. I'm interested to see how that model does and see you know, how good these numbers truly are. Um, now I will tell you a couple things I don't like already. So Quantix, back when I tested the golf ball initially two and a half years ago, they were about, I think, $27.99 a dozen for the control and about $33 a dozen for, I think it was maybe $32, $32 or $33 a dozen for uh, the F18 Tour. But the thing was, is I had free shipping. And so, you know, that's that's something that I talk about on my channel occasionally is, listen, if a golf ball is $40 a dozen, but you gotta pay $10 for shipping, that golf ball is $50 a dozen. Like there's no, <laughs> you can't say, oh, it's only 40, we gotta pay for the shipping, I'll order three or four. It's like, no, it's that golf ball, if you have to pay for the shipping, it is that way. So getting a, a golf ball for $33 a dozen or even 27, which is what I'm pretty sure the control was, was a great value, but that's changed, unfortunately. Now at this point, you know, you can go onto their website, get them obviously directly. I believe it's only a $2.99 shipping charge uh, based on what I saw a couple months ago. I don't know if that's changed since then, but you know, $3 there. And there has been a price increase on the golf balls as well. So now you're looking roughly about you know, probably 37, 38 a dozen for the F18 Tour. And that's kind of tough because now we've gone from below the vice line to above the vice line. And that's really, I mean, that's going to be the main competitor for this golf ball. I don't consider, you know, the Pro-V or, or, or TaylorMade or anything a direct competitor. When it comes to that direct-to-consumer market, Vice is the king of the hill, period. And that's because you can get them at Walmart or Target, and they have all kinds of cool designs. I mean, it was my, it was my tour golf ball of the year. Um, so definitely one of my favorites. The Vice line's incredible. So I think that's the direct competitor here, but now the price point is above that. So these numbers are going to have to be really, really fantastic uh, for sure. Now I will say that this golf ball is a little firmer than probably my swing speed will allow for. Uh, so what I expect is I expect the 9 iron to be low because I'm not going to be able to compress it. 7 might be okay. And then once we get into the hybrid driver, I expect it to, to pick up and be really good. Um, we'll see if that's for true. But just based on the compression alone, it's in the 90s, I believe. I think it's supposed to be for, I, I think based on what Quantix said, I think they want you at almost 100 mile an hour to hit it. And I'm at 93. So I'm close, but not quite there. Okay, so let's get into the design of the golf ball first. Um, Quantix has a very interesting logo. It kind of reminds me of like a, a NASA kind of thing. It is, it's a big, bold, uh, definitely kind of a more nerdy, you know, logo. But it's, it's cool. It's definitely different. Um, if you see it on the course, you are not going to know what this is. And you are going to balk at it immediately and think it's some off Chinese brand. Um, just because there's not enough brand recognition there yet. Uh, but it is a kind of a cool logo if you do know what it is. And then if you look on the side there, that's a really bad alignment tool. There's, there's so many golf balls doing better alignment tools than this. This is really as low as it gets because you've got a bar there that's really skinny, not big, not thick. Um, so overall, design-wise, eh, you know, I mean, they could do better. I wish they'd kind of updated it a little bit, but design of the golf ball is important to me, but more important is always going to be the numbers. So let's see how they do there. Uh, let's go out to the chipping and putting green real quick and let's see how those, uh, the type of field we get around the green. All right, so the golf ball came off pretty uh, decently firm, nothing too crazy. It actually did feel a little firmer than the control, which I thought was weird because, frankly, the control feels a lot firmer off the irons, but it did feel a little firm. There's some feedback there. I would say it's about a medium. It's right in between. All right, so definitely a little loud. Um, not, not super loud by any means. Definitely a firm press. There is a little bit of click there for sure, but it's about medium. It's nothing too crazy. Um, honestly, it's not a bad feeling golf ball by any means, but I was disappointed in the spin. I expected something like an F18 Tour golf ball that is made with uh, urethane. I expected it to have a little bit more stopping power, and although there is a little bit there, I've had some two-piece golf balls that have spun just as much as this around the green. Now, granted, once you get a little further back and you're doing pitches, then it actually changes a little bit and it does spin more, but you have to go about 30 yards back before you get that, which is a little disappointing. Okay, so overall feel with the F18 Tour, uh, it actually feels a little firmer to be honest with you. It doesn't surprise me. That's how Quantix have felt in the past. And that's how they've been so far. 
uh, so no surprise there. It actually doesn't have too loud of a click, to be honest with you, with most irons, but boy, once you get to the woods, it does have a loud click. Not as bad as the F35, for sure. The F35 is enough to ring your ears, but it still definitely is louder than I would like it to be. The golf ball really doesn't come off dead, and it also doesn't spring off there either. It's kind of right in the medium. A lot of this golf ball just kind of feels balanced. It acts like a golf ball that honestly maybe a little bit older, you know, it reminds me of a lot of the 2005 golf balls, 2000 series, you know, there's been a drastic change over the last few years as far as going a lot softer, a lot more springier, you know, giving people distance. This golf ball seems like it's maybe made for the old heads a little bit, at least that's how it feels so far. But let's get to the numbers and let's see how they do there to see if that's true or not. Okay, so let's dive into the numbers. So, so far I haven't, I haven't been super impressed so far, I'll be honest with you, um, which is a shame. I really do like Quantix. I hope these numbers save it. I really do, because I, I like Quantix. I want them to succeed, uh, but so far not off to a great start. Let's get into the nine iron. So, okay, so 90.7, that's a little below average, which I thought was gonna be the case. 124.2 on your total distance, 117.5, and a, you know, kind of mid to high launch, you know, so so closer to mid than anything, I would say. And then looking at the, the numbers, I lost just a little bit. Maybe, maybe I lost two yards per uh, both carry and total distance. And then I lost about a, a mile, uh, actually exactly a mile per hour on my swing. So those numbers weren't as bad as I thought they would be. I thought for sure, you know, with being a firmer golf ball, I would lose quite a bit of mile per hour speed. You know, with the Chrome Soft XLS, I lost like three or four mile an hour with my nine iron. Um, I expected that, so maybe that's a good sign. Maybe the rest of the numbers will be well, especially since I start compressing it more. Getting into that seven iron now, 6,807. That is a lot of spin for my seven iron. That's really good. Um, not quite as much as like the Kirkland, but a really good spinning golf ball. 103.7, unfortunately, is not gonna get it done. That's a very low number. 152.7 on my total distance is extremely low. 140.4 is extremely low. 19.4, it launched a little high. Um, yeah, unfortunately, those numbers are just not good. That's really bad. You know, it, it, for the nine iron to compress as well as it did and then to move into the seven and have it completely fall off, that's not normal. I don't see that a lot. Um, it's not a good sign, unfortunately. Um, we'll get into these numbers on the hybrid and driver, and I hope they improve, but uh, outlook is not great at this point. Okay, five hybrid, 4,068, that's uh, an average amount of spin, 116.4, that's average, 191.3 average, 176.7 average, 15.5, a very high launch. So again, ball speed actually was average, but because again, I, I launched this one a little higher, actually, I probably, I'll be honest with you, um, the launch angle actually I don't think is high for me. I like launching my hybrid high, so I was glad it did. Um, but it doesn't have enough spin to really stick a green consistently like I hope it would. Um, those numbers are just average. They're not bad by any means, but usually once I get into the hybrid, these firmer golf balls, that's where they shine. The super fast, you know, was 121.1, and the, the uh, Kirkland Signature was 119.2, and you know, really fast golf balls. Um, unfortunately, the 116.4 is just average, and, and if, if, if a golf ball is average uh, on the, the hybrid, most of the time it's not really that great on anything else. Okay, we'll get into the driver real quick. So 2,684 spin, that's slightly below average. 236.9, that is uh, definitely not good on the driver, below average. 132.5, below average. 216.2, below average. All right, so, you know, a lot of mediocrity there, unfortunately. Um, I'm gonna to touch on the durability real quick and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Durability-wise, if you look at this golf ball, um, there's nothing major as you can see on it, but if you actually do feel the golf ball, it feels a little sandpapery. It feels definitely like some of that coating's been knocked away. You can definitely look close and see some chips and stuff on the coating. Um, so overall, that is gonna to start to affect your putts. It is, so that's probably like a three out of five on durability. It's not great. Um, you know, I, I don't mind a golf ball looking like it's been beat to heck. Um, it's, it's when you feel it, I I want to see that coating still really nice and intact and here it's it's the opposite here it looks fantastic but when you feel it it's it's feeling pretty rough um, i definitely wouldn't trust it after the 60 70 shots i hit so it may be half a round at the most and for a premium tour golf ball that's disappointing Okay, so my final thoughts. Guys, this is an easy one, unfortunately. Again, I, I love direct-to-consumer companies. I love supporting the small business guys, but unfortunately, they gotta do better on this one for sure. Now, you can make an argument and say, well, Nick, you, you admitted the, the, the ball isn't for your swing speed. So, you know, what, how can you give an accurate judgment? Well, I'll tell you. The, the difference between the two is, let's look at like the Chrome Soft X, for example, right? It's kinda like I told you at the beginning of the video. The Chrome Soft X did exactly what I would expect a firm golf ball to do. The short wedges, yeah, I lost some distance. 7 iron, average. Hybrid, really good. Driver, really awesome good because as, as the, my swing speed got faster, I compressed the golf ball and it got better. 
I didn't see that from this one. This one, the nine iron was probably one of the better clubs. You know, I lost a little bit, but one of the better. Seven iron was abysmal. You know, the, the hybrid was okay, which is really disappointing. And then driver was well below average. So across the board, it just was terrible. Unfortunately, it's not gonna get a recommendation from me. They increased the price, but lowered the performance. Anytime you do that, it's not gonna be a good outcome, unfortunately. And there's a ton of golf balls in that 30 to 35 price range that you could go with, um, that you could go down to your local Walmart or local store and get, you know, the Cut DC $29.99 uh, is an amazing golf ball and I would recommend it all day over this. One, $29.99, no shipping. Go down to your local Walmart, pick it up. Local Target, pick it up. Uh, the Vice Pro Plus line, 35, same thing. Um, there's just a lot of competition right now. And unfortunately, with numbers like this, this one's just going to kind of fade unless they, they do something drastic to, to revamp it for sure. Hopefully in 2023, we see something. But until then, um, unfortunately, not much. And I'd also like to see Quantix come out with a, a couple different balls. I mean, I know right now they're trying to perfect the ones they got, and I respect that. Uh, we'll see how the control does. That one will be up next. But, uh, you know, they've only had the control and the tour for a few years now. And I'd like to see them come out with a beginner golf ball, you know, put, put some of this technology and knowledge into a beginner golf ball and maybe make it for $15 a dozen. See if you can get a little bit of revenue that way. Overall, guys, uh, unfortunately, we had kind of a, 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 we didn't have a great winner here, unfortunately, but uh, on to the next one. Maybe the control will be a little bit better. I know it's for intermediate players, all swing speed, so maybe we'll get a, a little bit better numbers with it, um, but we'll see. So I'll see you on that review, and as always, keep watching, keep saving, keep learning. Until next time.